Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to talk about the most fundamental right we as Americans have as citizens of this great country, the right to vote. The right to vote is not just fundamental, it is the right that preserves all of our other liberties that we as Americans hold dear. In fact, this right is so fundamental that most Americans, understandably, assume it is already enshrined in the Constitution. Unfortunately, Madam Speaker, most Americans would be wrong. While the right to vote is inherent throughout our founding document, and there are amendments prohibiting discrimination, nothing in the Constitution explicitly guarantees our right to vote. We as Americans possess no affirmative right to vote. Why is this important? Because without a constitutional provision, courts have upheld burdensome registration requirements, voter identification laws, and reduced early voting opportunities in states across the country. According to the Brennan Center for Justice, just this year alone, more than 80 restrictive laws have been introduced in more than 30 states. From New York to Washington, legislation has introdu been introduced that would require voters to show a photo ID. States from Virginia to New Mexico have considered bills that would make voter registration more difficult. And from Arizona to Tennessee, states have steps to limit early voting. Unfortunately, this plague of restrictive voting efforts has hit my state of Wisconsin as well. In 2011, our legislature passed a law that would limit the fundamental rights Wisconsin have to vote. Not only would this law require a photo ID, but it also took steps to disenfranchise senior citizens and college students, reduce registration opportunities, and restrict the ability of citizens to receive absentee ballots. But Madam Speaker, Wisconsin has something that other states do not possess, a guaranteed right to vote. Article 3, Section 1 of the Wisconsin Constitution specifically states Every United States citizen age 18 or older who is a resident of an election district in, his, in this state is a qualified elector of that district. This one sentence makes a huge difference for Wisconsinites. In two separate cases challenging the Wisconsin voter ID law, the Wisconsin Circuit Court has ruled that these restrictive, burdensome voting laws are unconstitutional because, and I quote from the decision in the NAACP of Milwaukee versus Walker, the Wisconsin Constitution expressly guarantees the right to vote. But this isn't enough. Not all states have this right. Our friends in Indiana, as we have seen, have little recourse if a restrictive voting law is signed into law. Now more than ever, we need to be protecting our right to vote, not restricting it. We need to reaffirm our founding principle that our country is at its strongest when everyone participates. We need to guarantee a right to vote for everyone. So this week, along with my friend and colleague, Congressman Keith Ellison from Minnesota, I introduced a right to vote amendment to the Constitution that will explicitly guarantee, without a doubt, the right of the American people to vote. The amendment is as simple as it is necessary. Every American citizen possesses the fundamental right to vote in every public election where they reside, and Congress has the right and power to protect it. No more will Americans have to prove their right to vote has been infringed. Instead, the burden of proof will be left to states to demonstrate that any efforts they take will not deny or abridge the fundamental right to vote. Now, I know there are some out there who will say the amendment to the Constitution is unrealistic. It's too hard to achieve. But those critics are short-sighted. This is about engaging my colleagues in Congress on both sides of the aisle and the American public in a movement to ensure our right to vote is not at the mercy of those acting with partisan motives. The right to vote is not a democratic right, nor is it a Republican right. It is an American right, and it is fundamental to a government for the people, by the people. Madam Speaker, I'm proud to join, I'm proud to support this bill, and I urge my colleagues to join on and protect our most fundamental right. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes.